Hello, Jackson County Schools, teachers, and leaders who support staff. Thank you for taking just a few minutes to watch this video clip. I'd like to give you just a few updates. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for a great first half of the school year. I don't think any of us can deny that certainly together we've navigated some interesting challenges over the past couple of years, but the most exciting thing that I can celebrate is the work that's still happening in our classrooms, and I appreciate each of you and all that you do. I do want to start with some celebrations and some things that I think we should always reflect on, and certainly one is I want to congratulate our Title I reward schools. We had four schools, East Jackson Elementary, North Jackson Elementary School, West Jackson Middle School, and East Jackson Middle School, who were recognized as Title I reward schools for highest performance, and we were one of the highest numbers in the entire state in terms of having four schools in one district, and so again, that only comes from dedication and hard work of our teachers and what's happening in the classroom, and certainly the leaders and support staff in those buildings as well. We also just learned, and many of you probably saw the email, that we got an innovation grant, and we were excited about that. Our, te our school leaders and several teacher leaders and district staff worked together to submit that plan, and uh, we're excited about the potential that that may provide for us in the very near future. And of course, we also received what I think is the sixth MSP grant for Jackson County Schools, which will allow us to uh, work towards a robotics curriculum for grades three through eight students. And that will be an exciting uh, career, college and career readiness opportunity for our kids, and it hopefully will bring a lot of fun to the classroom for both teachers and students as well. This, this video is really intended to be sort of a short overview of January 5th's planned meeting, which will be uh, at 11 o'clock a.m. at Jackson County Comprehensive High School. Again, that's on Monday, January 5th when we return from our winter break. But uh, I'd like to give you some information ahead of time, and I'd like to ask that you preview it and spend some time really reflecting. Uh, this is some important information related to potential of our future, our strategic plan. We had several outstanding community meetings earlier in the year in our district and school leaders as well as some very important teacher leaders and many of you have been a part of this process, but the work continues and uh, we hope to bring some, some closure and decision to these, uh, these concepts in early spring. So we've got a decision to make and I'd like to just start with some overview. So with that, Take some time to review this and have some great questions before we come to the meeting on January 5th. So let's go through just a couple of items. To start with, let, let me be remind let us all be reminded that our goal is to be the most sought after school district in the state of Georgia. As you know, we want to continue to embrace innovation. We want to promote customized learning. We want to be transparent with our partners in the work, and that we've done a really good job with that. Each of you have uh, reached out and, and partnered with our families and our community, and, and we need to make sure that we are all in this work together for our students. With that goal in mind, we have to think about if this is what we want to achieve, then how will we get there? And we will get there by simply focusing on student success, whatever it takes. We need to work together as teams focused on the performance at all of our students' levels, and we hope that you've recognized and noticed that while we certainly all agree that what happens in the classroom with students is the most important thing and has the greatest impact, there are several uh, aspects of this organization that make it all work. So we have custodians, school nutrition, we, we have maintenance operators, we have outstanding school leaders, we have various parts of the organization that make sure that what happens in the classroom is, is, uh, is a taken care of. And I want to thank each of our teachers, but I also want to make sure that we embrace each other and realize that it takes all of us to make Jackson County Schools the most sought after district in the nation. And I'd like to ask that we take a perspective that every single adult who has the privilege of interacting with kids sees themselves as a graduation coach. Regardless of what age, what grade level, or what interest, or what challenges a child might have, each of us have a, a distinct responsibility for seeing ourselves as a kid advocate and someone who wants to see every child be successful. So taking that will certainly help us get there. We want to focus our, focus our energies on what our true vision is for the future over, over the experiences of the past. As I mentioned earlier, all of us, both in our personal lives and our professional lives in the past few years, have, ex have faced challenges. But uh, we can't control necessarily what happens to us, but we can certainly control how we respond to what happens to us. And so I'm excited about the future of Jackson County, and I hope you are equally as excited. And I know together we can make some, some, great, um, act, some great planning and some uh, great achievements for our students in the future. So as you know, we are working on a very, very comprehensive strategic plan that we hope to have completed this spring. Again, it's included teachers, it's included our stakeholders, and we'll continue to communicate that work over the next few months. 
One of the important parts of the strategic plan will be thinking about the feedback from our community, what our, com what our community has shared with us in terms of their wishes um, and what they perceive to be needs in our school district, and then our internal perspective as well. And what we hear from our community is certainly they truly value innovation, they value our community schools, and they most importantly, they value partnerships. And so as we think about um, our work with the Board of Education, district leaders, school leaders, classroom leaders, and all support leaders, we want to develop a finalized strategic plan that's comprehensive and aligns our decision on IE Square, Charter, or Status Quo, and then we want to align all of these with our district goals, along with our budget. <clears throat> so why then are we looking at a flexibility option? Well, first of all, if you're not familiar with it, the state did pass legislation that requires school districts to make a decision by June 30th of 2015. They must either declare that they will be investing in education, which is IE Square, or charter system or status quo. So in order for us to make an informed decision, we'd like for you to be a part of this. We want you to become familiar with it. And if you have any questions, these, these are the kinds of questions that I want you to make note of and think about and ask at the January 5th meeting. And certainly we may not know all the answers, but at least we can, uh, we can partner in the work and, and explore what the best option is for Jackson County Schools. The intent of this is to use flexibility to improve student achievement. So if you see this, this is actually from the Department of Education. And this provides an overview that we're looking for flexibility and innovation so that we can increase student performance. And if, you, if you're not familiar, and as a classroom teacher, um, having loved that world and lived in that world, I realize that you're very busy dealing with the day-to-day -day needs of your students and your families and your school. So you may not be as familiar with these flexibility options. But overall, there are many, many compliance requirements that exist within Title 20, which is the overall uh, state law for education. But we'd like to seek some flexibility in some of those, and that's the intent of this particular um, requirement that was legislatively implemented. So what are we talking about? As I said, it, the bottom line is student achievement. We want student performance, and we want our students to have as many opportunities as possible. All of this really falls under Title 20, which are Georgia education laws. We're looking for flexibility. And there, there, if you looked at Title 20, it would probably be a little bit more than you want to try to digest. But there are some real uh, significant guidelines in there. And some of those that you'll see under the big four include things like expenditure control, as you know. That's how we how we allocate our funds, salary schedule requirements, state class size, and while we don't want to we don't want to necessarily increase class size, what we want is flexibility in how we can creatively um, customize classrooms and settings for students. So how do we make that decision? Well, recently, hopefully, if you've not already looked, you've taken some time to get on the DOE website and you hopefully have seen our systems CCRPI data for 2014. Uh, each school has a C CCRPI score, as does our district. And while there are highlights, there are things that we have to work on. And um, I, I'm proud of our schools. I'm proud of our school district. But I'm, none of us should be satisfied with our existing CCRPI uh, score. So I'd like for each school to really explore that data and figure out what does it tell you about what's happening in your school and in your classroom. And what does it tell us as a district that we may need to focus on in terms of support. So these are areas that we want to consider in the entire decision making process in terms of which operational approach best matches our goals for a district. So then what is the difference in these different flexibility options? Well the first option is IE squared and this is developed by our local school district in partnership with the Board of Education and our school and teacher leaders and there you establish rigorous and, and target goals and you negotiate a contract with the State Department, the State Board of Education, as well as the Governor's Office of Student Achievement. But by negotiating this contract it allows you flexibility and you can reflect you can request flexibility waivers in all areas of Title 20. Now you can see there are some federal and state compliance guidelines that you cannot waiver, but the vast majority that would help us from a flexibility point of view, you can request a waiver under IE squared. So you establish goals, you negotiate a contract, and you request waivers with IE squared. With charter, it's similar in nature in that you're looking for flexibility, but you take a different approach. This is governed by local school governance teams. So you'd still have a local board of education, um, and the local board still has the same role, but each school then has 
a local school governance team, which is similar to the overall Jackson County Board of Education, except it's very focused on the needs of their individual school. This, this would allow schools to, and, and actually the entire district, to seek flexibility from Title 20 rules, and many of the same flexible waivers that you can receive under IE Squared, all of those are also available under Charter System. The primary difference between Charter System and IE Squared are local governance teams. And so there are potentially additional funds available under Charter System. However, they're only available if the state indeed funds those. So that's not a guarantee, but at this point, as we know it, there would be some additional funds with the Charter System. So if you're trying to make sure you understand the difference between those two, they both provide flexibility in uh, the Title 20 laws and they both require high academic standards and targets that you're establishing and negotiating with a contract. The charter system requires local school governance teams so that each principal then would serve on a board. They would not be a voting member of that board, but they would serve as a part of a local school governance team. IE Square does not have that component. The contract is directly with the school system and the State Board of Education and the Governor's Office of Student Achievement. And the last option is status quo, and uh, we can probably all tell from the name of that, that's probably not the option the state expects us to take. Who wants to be status quo? So uh, status quo would leave most of the things that we presently have in place. However, we would not be able to request any waivers. So there would be very little flexibility, and certainly no additional funds are provided for the status quo. So status quo is probably not an option that Jackson County Schools will explore, but I think it's important that you understand the difference in those. So then how do we take our feedback that we've received through our strategic planning process and our goal of a comprehensive strategic plan for both uh, program planning as well as facilities planning, how do we take all of those goals and visions that we as a district share and move them forward in a uh, budget prioritization process? So if you think about this, um, in many conversations around our district with our principals visiting our schools, um, we, we know and we, we share the concept that our first goal has to be to provide students comprehensive programs at all levels. And I just want to really, really congratulate our schools. We have many schools that have truly embraced leadership programs all the way from kindergarten through their senior year. We've got schools and students who are stepping up and becoming empowered learners, and they're taking on new challenges, and they're rising to new challenges. We have several schools that have really embraced STEM programs. We have some of the finest fine arts programs in the country. And of course, we do have outstanding um, vision for 21st century technology. Now, I do want to say that um, we're excited about the innovation grant that we just received. Uh, we know this planning grant will help us go to the next level. And we do have our board support in expanding our end user devices. And I do want to acknowledge that I know uh, many of you who are there in the classroom, you, you have had challenges from time to time, and quite honestly, any time you're implementing technology, regardless of how fantastic the materials are, there's going to be glitches with technology. But we do acknowledge that we've invested the front end of our expenditures on building a strong infrastructure. And unfortunately, some of our end-user devices are are overdue for updates. So some of the challenges that you experience have more to do with older devices than they do with our infrastructure. So therefore, please be prepared. We are going to respond to this need and it's going to take some time, but in the next, in the upcoming weeks, we're working with the technology department to purchase some additional materials and these grant funds and some of the other funds that we're receiving are really helping us with that. Uh, I want to commend and congratulate and think about how many of our children truly benefit from our CTAE program. And as you all experience at our high school level, especially you know the benefits of those programs in terms of college and career readiness, and even more so college and career success. And then we're also excited about expanding our dual enrollment program for University of North Georgia, which will be based at East Jackson High School. But students feasibly could finish their first two years of college before before graduating from high school. And not only is that a tremendous benefit for those students, it's a great benefit for their families from a financial point of view. And then we're looking at expanding our Lanier Tech and Athens Tech offerings. So these are exciting opportunities. And of course, while it's not listed here, we continue to look for opportunities to stretch ourselves and provide more AP courses. We've already have a, quite a few students, many students, who are participating in a variety of AP courses. So having program comprehensive um, offerings is really important, and that's our first priority. 
then of course we'd like to be able to provide students and teachers access to all of this learning through a maximized instructional calendar. We were very excited this year to be able to have a full 180 days for our students and 190 days for our teachers and um, appreciate the fact that you've taken advantage of that and heard some real positive feedback and, and, and certainly appreciate that, that uh, having a full pre-planning made the start of this year just a little smoother than years past. So we appreciate you uh, taking advantage of those opportunities and making sure that every single day we're maximizing students' learning opportunities. We wanted to again promote customized learning more than standardized testing and standardized teaching. We've got to know our learners and get them, pick them where they are and take them where they want to go and help them get there. And then of course we've continued to have and will continue until we reach our goal of having a sustainable fund balance of nine to twelve million dollars and that will take us a few years but as you know we've made some tough decisions over the past couple of years to try to to get us on track to do that and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about our budget um, at our January 5th meeting. So with that being said I'd just like to thank you first of all for taking the time to to watch this short overview of our meeting that's upcoming in January and thank you so much even though I do not get to visit schools to the um, as much as I'd like to myself and many district staff are in and out of the schools a lot and while I don't see you face to face every day or even every week or every month I'm very aware of what's happening in our schools and I'm very conscious of your needs and I'm also very excited about what you're doing we have lots and lots of exciting engaging rigorous learning happening across our district and we want to do everything we can to support you so that every single classroom provides children everything they need to go to the next step in their lives so thank you for what you do i hope each of you will take some time over the holidays to spend time with your family and friends rest relax play have some fun and come back refreshed and ready to go for a great second half of 2014-15 school year. Look forward to seeing you in January and have a wonderful holiday.